Over the past couple weeks, I've been working on my own game called Ultiverse, and while I am still pretty early in development on this new game, it has forced me to not only learn a lot of new skills, but it also has forced me to adapt a lot of my existing skills in order to make this game work. One of the skills that I'm having to both adapt as well as learn brand new is melee combat. This includes a lot of things that I've done in the past, but also takes a lot of new things that I haven't tried before and has required me to kind of bind them all up into one. So in this video, I wanna go over how I'm starting out with my melee combat in the hopes that you guys may even find a little bit of this information useful as well. But before we jump into that, this is a bit of a new video for me. So if you guys enjoy it, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. And if you don't, leave a comment down below telling me either why or what I can even be doing differently to make these kinds of videos a little bit better. With that, let's jump right in the video. Now let's start at the very, very beginning, being able to grab our melee weapons. Now for this example, I actually decided to use a sword to start out with, mostly because it was the quickest asset that I was able to get and that I was able to use for development. Now I know some of you may say, why not just use the grab component? It's there, it's simple, and it works. While the grab component does work, it doesn't work in all situations, especially with melee combat. The grab component has one single downside when it comes to melee combat, and that is that if your sword or hammer or whatever it is that you're using comes into contact with the surface, it's just going to go right through that surface. Which, while that can work for some games, I wanted to try and aim for something that was a little bit more on the realistic side. And so I wanted for my swords to be able to bend back if I tried sticking my hand into a surface. And I did find a pretty good way of doing this using a physics handle. Now, a nice thing about the physics handle is the physics handle allows for us to grab any component with a location rotation and then attempt to force the object that we're grabbing into that location rotation. Nice thing is that if the object can't be forced into that location and that rotation, it's just going to bend back because it's using standard physics. All you do is you set simulate physics and you give your player a physics handle that will grab onto any object that the player tries to grab onto. It's very, very simple to do. However, it did have one issue when it came to the hand. Problem with the hand is that the hand is already attached to the motion controller and this ended up being actually a pretty simple solution as well. All I would do is I took my hand and I attached it to the actual sword that I was grabbing and then when it was time to release it, I just attached it back to the motion controller. Now while this does work, I don't know that this is the best solution and I will probably end up just detaching the hand altogether later on in order to get a better result. However, for simple testing purposes, this was good enough and this allowed for me to be able to grab objects and collide them with the environment with one issue. When I tried to take a sword and I took, for example, the very tip and pushed it into a wall and then started rotating, the whole sword would actually shift up from my hand. Now, for obvious reasons, this is not the best result, but this actually ended up being a pretty simple solution. It just took me quite a whole while to figure out. All I had to do is make sure that the linear constraint was not soft on the physics handle. It was just a simple checkbox and everything worked just fine. In addition to this, I also made a few small modifications to the force that's applied on the physics handle when it's shifting around, just to make something that is a little bit more reactive, but won't start spazzing out the moment I start having huge, huge differences in the location rotation, because that was a big issue later on. It required a lot, a lot of tweaking, and it will probably require even more tweaking later on, because I have noticed a few small issues here and there when there's a huge difference in the target location rotation and the location rotation that the sword is currently in, but that's going to be something that I'm going to deal with a little bit later on. Now, if this wasn't a lot of information, now we get into actually being able to collide with an enemy. Now, this is what I'm kind of considering to be stage two, being able to attack the enemy itself. Now, stage two actually comes into a lot of stages when it comes to attacking an enemy. First, you need to be able to actually apply damage to an enemy. Second, if you want best re better results or a better interaction with the AI, you need to make sure that the AI is able to physically react to a blow from a sword, a hammer, whatever the case may be. And third, this is one that I really wanted to do because I thought it'd be a lot of fun. 
I wanted to be able to make sure that enemies could be ragdolled if they were hit with enough force. Now, applying damage to the enemy is actually pretty simple. Because we're already simulating physics, I know I can get a velocity on our sword, meaning how fast that is going through. Using this velocity, I can get a length of the vector's velocity, and with that, I use that to apply a damage to whatever it is that it hits. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's only applying damage to enemies. This actually means that it applies damage to everything. But unless whatever it is I'm hitting has the code to be able to handle what happens when it gets damaged, then nothing really happens. So the sword does apply damage to everything, but... In the AI itself, I did actually set up our NPC to be able to receive the damage, which was not only useful for health reasons, but also became useful later on during the ragdolling stage as well. Now, the second stage that I moved on to is being able to physically react when a object actually hit the enemy. And this both was very easy and very difficult for a lot of unnecessary reasons. Now, the easy part was actually getting the actual NPC to interact when it got hit by a sword or a hammer or whatever have you. This was done using the physics animation component, or physical animation component, my bad. Physical animation component is really, really simple to use. All you do is, assuming that your skeletal mesh has physics enabled, you tell this physical animation component what skeletal mesh it's going to be bound to, and then you tell it what bones, as well as their children bones, are going to have physics simulated. Then you add in a few additional settings here and there to make sure that the actual animation is a little bit stronger, and there you have it. You have a very simple interaction with the skeletal mesh. Now, I do have plans later on to maybe have it so that way these only begin their physical animation when they come into contact with a melee weapon. And the only reason I'm thinking about this is because the animation does look a little bit limp and weakened. And I've noticed a few issues, especially with the legs, when this does happen. So I may end up changing this a little bit more later on, but for the time being, this does work pretty well and allows for us to see that our melee weapons interact with the skeletal mesh. But there was a single issue. Our NPC is a character, and this is pretty standard when you are developing an NPC or an AI or anything of that nature. They have a capsule component that acts as their center point for the actual skeletal mesh. Uh, it allows for the skeletal mesh to stand upright, basically, and allows for them to move around. Now, for whatever reason, and this is something that I don't understand, when the melee weapon came in contact with the capsule component, or even came close to it, it was almost like there was a sudden magnetic attraction that allowed for my sword to fling not only to the capsule component, but then through it and to the other side, producing the most bizarre reaction that I think I've ever seen with physics components in VR. <laughs> now, fortunately, this did end up becoming a much easier issue to fix, but it took me a long time to figure out because I wasn't sure if this was the skeletal mesh or if this was something else entirely. I legitimately thought for the longest time this was the skeletal mesh. But to simplify things down, the only, re the only way to actually fix this that I found, it was really simple, was I took my sword and I made sure that it was not able to collide with the capsule component. It was very simple to do. All I did was just disable the collision between those two collision profiles and everything worked just fine from then on. It was, but it is a very, very weird issue to have and took me a long time to figure out. Now, the final step that I have is being able to ragdoll an enemy when it gets hit. And not only gets hit, but gets hit with enough velocity. Now, this was a little bit difficult to do, but also not. It just took a lot of research. <laughs> now, the actual ragdolling step itself is actually pretty simple. All we do is we set simulate physics on the skeletal mesh itself and we disable the physical animation component. And that allowed for our skeletal mesh to go ragdolling off in a direction when it got hit. It was very, very simple to do. However, I wanted to take this a step further and make sure that this NPC could get up after it was hit and sat there for so long. And this was the actual hard part of all of this. 
Now, in order to do this, it required several steps and some of these steps had to happen in a specific order. Now, during the ragdolling stage, I made sure that the capsule component followed along with the skeletal mesh. Now, I think it's a little confusing that this is able to work the way that it does because the skeletal mesh is a child of the capsule component. But my assumption is that because physics is being simulated on the skeletal mesh, everything just works. So this was actually pretty simple to do. All we did is during the ragdolling stage, the capsule component follows along with the skeletal mesh. Preferably, you want it to follow along with the center point of the skeletal mesh. So I had it bound to one of the spine bones, if I recall. During this stage, we also want to keep track of the location of the skeletal mesh as it travels along. In order to determine when it was time for the NPC to get back up, what I decided to do is I followed along with a specific bone in the skeletal mesh. And then once that bone was pretty still for more than a certain amount of seconds, then we engaged the get up process. Now the get up process was actually a little bit weird and had to happen in a very specific order in order for everything to work. First off, we stopped getting the capsule component to follow. Then after we've stopped having the capsule component follow along with the NPC, we then went on and we attached the skeletal mesh to the capsule component again. I'm not entirely sure why this had to happen, but it did and it was weird. After that, I also made sure that the world location or relative location of the skeletal mesh was correct. Because of the way that characters are, it automatically spawned up in the air rather than on the ground like I wanted. So I had to make sure that was shifted down a certain amount of, uh, of units. Now then, and only then, was I able to disable the physics on the skeletal mesh and I was able to re-enable the physical animation. Now this is the part I don't understand. I found two issues throughout this process. One, if you didn't reattach and reset the relative position of the skeletal mesh, for some reason it went off into some random place in the void and I was never able to figure out where exactly it was going, but it just kind of vanished. I knew it was still there though because the capsule component was still where it was supposed to be. It's just that the skeletal mesh just kind of vanished. Now, the second thing that, that I'd run into during this step is if I did the physical animation component setup before I reattached the skeletal mesh to the capsule component, for whatever reason, the physical animation component just refused to take hold. I found this out after a lot of experimenting and a lot of trial and error that the physical animation component has to come after the reattachment of the skeletal mesh. If it happens before, the, it just doesn't take place and so there's no physics interaction between the actual skeletal mesh and any melee weapon that you're grabbing. Now having a velocity limit is actually pretty simple and to do this I actually decided to create a damage type class for a lot of my melee weapons. I'll also be making damage type classes for other types of damage as well but I decided to make this one specifically for melee weapons. Now when I set up this damage type class I did set it up so that way I could get a velocity from our initial instigator of the apply damage and using this I was able to check what the velocity was of our static mesh being our melee weapon and then using this velocity I then converted it into a vector length which gave me a float value that represented how fast the melee weapon was being swung and all of this allowed for me to create a limit if this vector length was greater than or equal to some number then ragdoll and go ahead and fly off. And this ended up creating a pretty nice overall interaction where I was not only able to interact by pushing on the NPC in any direction to get them to bend in that direction, but it also allowed for me to swing a little bit harder and then, allow, and then cause that NPC to go flying, which created a bit more of a realistic result. However, I may need to change this around a little bit more as is the theme with this video. <laughs> and that kind of leaves me with where I am with the melee combat at the moment. As I say, there's still a lot more work to do and I'll be doing update guides not only on melee combat, but I'll also be doing other guides on other mechanics that I'm working on throughout the development of Ultiverse. 
So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.